everyone. I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from around the country. After the, the horrific mass shooting on December 2nd in San Bernardino that left 14 dead and 21 wounded, Bishop Gerald Barnes of San Bernardino is calling for people to pray for unity and healing. The bishop said in a statement, for those who lost their lives, we pray for their eternal rest and God's strength to their loved ones left behind. And for those who are wounded, we pray for their health and healing. The bishop also asked for prayers for law enforcement officers. The shooting took place at the Inland Regional Center, a state-run facility for those with developmental disabilities. County health officials were having an employee gathering at the time of the attack. Two armed suspects were killed by police four hours later in a shootout about two miles from the social services center. Bishop Barnes called on the people of the community to come together in unity to bring light to the darkness of this day. In news now from the Vatican, Pope Francis's focus for this weekly general audience was on his recent trip to Africa. He spoke specifically about the men and women who serve as missionaries to the continent. Rome Reports has more. Praising the example of missionaries, the Pope said they gave up their lives to serve those who were most in need, wherever they were. He recalled meeting an 81-year-old female religious who went to Africa as a missionary when she was just 24. <laughs> Tante preti, tante religiosi che bruciano la vita per annunciare Gesù Cristo. The Pope explained that some Muslim women went to receive care from missionaries. He stressed that they respected their beliefs because they did not offer catechesis in exchange for their care. La missionarietà que, e, e non è fare proselitismo perché mi diceva questa suora che le donne musulmane vadano da loro perché sanno che le suore sono infermiere eh, buone, che le, le curano bene e, e, e non fanno la catechesi per convertirli. Testimonianza. Poi chi vuole le fanno la catechesi. Ma testimonianza, questa è la grande missionarietà eroica della Chiesa, annunciare Gesù Cristo con la propria vita. Looking now at news from around the world, in a moving ceremony which took place in the atrium of a small church located in the village of San Francisco Hacienda, 27 miles east of San Salvador, North Americans and Salvadorans gathered at the spot where four churchwomen were killed 35 years ago. On December 2nd, 1980, Marinol sisters Mara Clark and Ita Ford, along with Ursuline sister Dorothy Kazel and lay missionary Jean Donovan, were abducted, raped, and murdered by members of the National Guard. The church women were in El Salvador to work with refugees of the country's civil war. U.S. delegates have called for the government to reopen the investigation into the deaths of the four women. In 1984, four guardsmen were found guilty of the killings and convicted to 30 years in prison, but those who planned the murders and gave the orders have never been brought to justice. More news now from the Vatican. With the Jubilee of Mercy beginning next week, the Pope was presented with a special gospel to be used during this special year. This is the enthusiasm that Monsignor Fisichella and his team were greeted with at the Vatican when they arrived to present to the Pope the Book of Gospels for the Jubilee. He brought this book, which contains the readings from the Gospels for Sundays and feast days during the Jubilee. Monsignor Fisichella, the organizer of the Jubilee, explained them to Pope Francis. The Jesuit artist Marco Rupnik was also present to explain the mosaics that illustrate the Gospel. He told the Pope how he composed them. E padre Rupnik ha fatto, questo è proprio tutto mosaico. E... Questa è una miniatura dove ci sono addirittura i petruzzi di meno di un terzo di millimetro. The Pope eyed the book while closely listening to their explanations and jokes. 
Speriamo Santo Padre che non sia troppo pesante quando lei poi dopo deve benedire. No, eh, abbiamo un Papa forte adesso. <laughs> Father Rupnik explained to the Pope that he had chosen to represent a crucified Christ on the cover because it was the moment of the greatest mercy when he suffered for all people. Looking now at news from around the country, in Boston, the Dorchester Lower Mills campus of St. John Paul II Catholic Academy was rededicated on December 2nd. On hand for the ceremony was Boston Archbishop Cardinal Sean O'Malley, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh, Campaign for Catholic Schools Chair Jack Connors, and Superintendent Kathy Mears. A volunteer fundraising committee raised $10 million to complete the renovations. The 100-year-old school building has been completely renovated. There are new music, art, and science labs for the school's 326 students. Cardinal Sean said that Catholic education provides students the foundation for a lifetime of success and service. Mayor Walsh called the St. John Paul II Catholic Academy an important part of Boston's fabric and that he looked forward to seeing the Academy and its many campuses continue to grow and succeed in years to come. And finally in news, Pope Francis has written about his Bible and his Bible reading habits in the preface to the German language study guide Youth Bible for the Catholic Church. Other language versions are expected in 2016. In the preface, Pope Francis urges young people to use the study guide and to read their Bibles daily because God speaks through the Bible. He also revealed how he reads his Bible, saying he reads a bit, then sets it down and lets himself be seen by the Lord. The Pope, who will turn 79 on December 17th, said his Bible has seen his joy and has been bathed in his tears. It is my priceless treasure, the Pope wrote, and nothing in the world would make me give it up. And that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.